Today, I'm taking this British sleeper train from the capital of London through overcast and rainy Cornwall to the lovely seaside terminus of Penzance. I'll be showing you the onboard amenities, from coach to bedroom. The lounge. And the food served on board. So without further ado, let's go. Hello and welcome from London's Paddington Station. Today I'm taking the Night Riviera sleeper train to Penzance. So without further ado, let's go. Paddington Station is one of the oldest train stations that I have been to, with the station itself dating back all the way to 1838. Today it serves more than 60 million people yearly and has a whopping 13 platforms. The station itself has a small but lovely food court, a hotel attached to it, and of course a lounge. First, we need to obtain our ticket. With ticket in hand, time to head over to the GWR First Class Lounge, but not before making a visit to a certain someone. While this looks like a unsuspecting lounge, instead of turning left once you enter to enter the main waiting room, keep walking down and you'll find a surprise. This is Queen Victoria's former private waiting room, now part of the GWR lounge. Now that's first class. As my train pulls into Paddington Station, I leave the lounge to head on board.
After checking in with the attendant, I'm on board, heading to my room for the night. My room for tonight is berths 21 and 22, which means I have solo occupancy in my room, which is a very nice perk. The reason being was because I was traveling with my family on this trip. Well, hello. And boy, is this room quite the sight. It is absolutely beautiful in here. So, uh, let's take a tour. So, uh, here we go. This is a very nice room. Like... We got your lock controls here. You can... Oops. I guess this is how you lock the door. Unlock it. Lock. Obviously, you need a key card. So, here we go. This is my key card. It seems like updated the system from those old-fashioned uh, dotted ones to the current more hotel-like ones. We got some coat hooks up here, a uh, vent blowing down heat air up there. I believe this is a nightlight. Oh yes it is, that's the nightlight. We got the conjoining door to the next room. I won't be using that. We got a closet, so let's see how this opens. I think you sort of, hi, here we go. You, you basically push it in and voila, featuring two complimentary bottles of water and two stationary coat hooks, very nice. Now let's move on to, here we go. Let's move my camera aside. Uh, yeah, why not put that on the bed? Get my tickets, uh, I'll put them on my luggage. So we got soap here, thing down this. We have a sink. So let's see the pressure. It's pretty good for a train, not gonna lie. And we even got this little plug thing down here so you can plug the sink. Uh, uh, wait for that to stop. There we go. Okay. So now let's push this thing down. And actually, what I like about this, it doesn't, like, if you open it, right, and you just sort of, you can't really slam it. So, I'm a clumsy person. Do things. I, I accidentally slammed the hotel door. This is not going to happen here because no matter how hard I try. Okay. I can slam it like that, but obviously I'm not gonna, you know, just slam the sink down. But yeah, I like the design. And then here we got, I think, okay, here we go. Got up ourselves. Ah, here we go, okay. All right, so here we go, we got our blackout blind and here we go we got a class 801 or 802 i think sitting right next to us here in paddington put that blackout blind back down we got some extra storage space up here got some handles got some extra storage storage space under the bed got the little table that flips down tray service in the morning for breakfast look at this i think this is for the shower i don't i didn't book one though so i'm not sure what that's for maybe to wash up your face we got the second bunk which uh okay here we go folds down okay go push this little button down and we got the steps to the top bunk which i have not yet set up all right, so now we got to answer the elephant in the room. Do I fit this bed? So here we go. My feet are fully towards the end of the cabin. And wow, look at that. I got one extra pillow of headspace. So I think this is going to be a great night. Plus, these beds are like so soft. Just check this out. Man. Probably one of the softest beds I've ever been on on a train. However, don't take my word for it. I've only been 
on a sleeper train twice. First was on the night jet in 2021, and second is now. But not saying I'm not grateful, just, you know, there's a whole lot more people out there that are more non- There's a whole group of people out there that are much more knowledgeable than me when it comes to sleeper trains. So take my word about this room with a grain of salt, but so far so good. Oh, and last but not least, let's review the buttons on board. So we got a couple of buttons here. This one's the main lights. This one, I believe, yeah, these are the lights down here. And then we got these, control the lights up here. Uh, we got this, this turns the uh, power outlet on. You have to actually turn You have to actually turn the power outlets on in Britain uh, or England, I should say. You got, so you got one three pin socket and you got two USB. We got a room service button down here. Actually kind of clever. They make it really hard to press because it's hard to sort of just whack it by accident. So that's good on GWR's part. And look at this. We got this plastic movable reading light. Look at that. And I believe that we don't have a identical one on the second bunk. And just like that, we depart Paddington bang on time, headed for Penzance. I decided to turn in for the night right after departure from London as our train left the city at around midnight. bathrooms on board honestly surprised me. First off, they have a muted light blue color scheme on the walls. Everything was working and in good working condition, so nothing was broken. Everything was well stocked, and it was really, really clean. And this train had been chugging along for a couple hours at this point, so that really surprised me, because if this was the US, the bathrooms would probably not be as clean. Aside from that, great job, GWR. You have a very nice bathroom on board. Next, let's take a quick look at the lounge and cafe car. The section you're seeing now is the lounge section. This is off limits for anyone in standard class and has an assortment of different seating arrangements, including sofas. Thank you. 
Past this door, and we enter the cafe section of the car. This area is mainly to serve coach passengers willing to purchase a snack on board. Now we have entered coach class or standard class. It's laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration and I personally would not recommend this accommodation on the Night Riviera. You might as well just take the intercity train instead. Firstly, these highly fluorescent white lights stay on for the entire journey. Not to mention these seats are rock hard and have no recline. Yes, you heard me, no recline. Along with that, the less than decent legroom as well as the plastic backs of the seats with the muted colors at the front of the seats just gives this entire cabin a very unpleasant feeling that I would just not want to spend the night in. This is why I'd recommend either taking the inner city GWR train in the morning or just spending a little extra money to book that sleeper room. So as we pull into Penzance Station, what did I think of the Night Riviera sleeper? Well, I thought it was great. First, the rooms were lovely, and while it can get cramped when two people are in a room instead of solo occupancy, I still find them to be a real treat to stay in. The staff were all real nice and welcoming, and the lounge at London and Penzance stations were both real nice. I do have two complaints about the service though. First is standard class on the trains are in a desperate need of an upgrade or just a refurbishment. I really think both are needed. The second is the booking process, at least overseas. It was just terrible. Never before have I seen such a arduous process just to book a sleeper train ticket. It took around a week for any transaction to go through. And my guess is, since I live in the States, a English train company is not as good as getting a transaction than, say, Amtrak. But with that being said, it has to be fixed. Speaking of booking, how much did this journey cost? This trip costed around 400 US dollars, which, considering the experience I had, I would say is pricey but worth it. Overall, I would recommend you try the Night Riviera at least once as it will definitely be an unforgettable adventure. So welcome to Penzance, everybody. The weather is a little uh, hit or miss, but uh, hopefully the sun will come out. For now, I'm gonna head inside the station and into the Night Riviera Sleeper Lounge. Here is the lounge in Penzance. While smaller than in London, it's still perfectly adequate and a very nice cherry on top to round off the trip. Surprisingly though, only drinks were on offer, and in other videos I've seen on YouTube, it seems like the lounge is better stocked in those videos. So is this a common occurrence at the lounge in Penzance? Please let me know in the comments below. Oh, and one last thing I kind of forgot to mention, both lounges feature a shower and you can book them upon your arrival. I really like this feature and while I was hesitant to take a shower before, I certainly do not regret my decision. So thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the 4905 here, and I will see you next time. Take care.